Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now, in the last couple of episodes, we created a sound effect manager and a music manager to be able to add some sound into our game and make it a little bit more interesting for our players to play. Um, I'm actually going to turn down my volume because it'll be very loud here if I do this. Um, if we hit play here, we'll see it in action working nicely for us, hopefully, if all <laughs> works okay. There we go, we have our music playing, we have our little sound effects and stuff. But at the moment, all our sound effects have um, different kind of audio levels, just because of different uh, things being set up in different way, different uh, wave files and stuff like that. Um, they can be at a bunch of different levels. So what we can do is kind of go in and manually adjust the level of each thing so say on our heart sound that might be too loud or might be too quiet if, we, if it's too quiet compared to everything else say we'd leave that up full and say we'd turn down the dead volume down a little bit like that but what about in the future when we want to add say the ability for our players to control the sound effect volume or the music volume or just the overall volume of our game that would be would be run into a problem then because what we would do say if we want to say if we use like a scale of 100 for our volume if we set it to midway volume we would go ahead and just magically set all our audio sources in the game but if we were to set them all to be at say halfway say 52 or whatever like that then we would lose any of that customized uh, difference that we set so now we'd end up with a problem where suddenly our dead sound effect would be too loud so what we can do is create a system that will be able to um, control the volume and have it be adaptable so that if we change the overall volume of the game, certain individual elements can still be slightly louder and slightly quieter so that we can control those things and actually be able to use them well within our game. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to create a simple script that we can attach to all of our audio effects that will enable us to control the volume. And then we're going to create an overall volume kind of manager that will manage all of the sound effects and uh, set them when we need to. So we're going to create the volume controller script first. So we're going to create a new script, new C sharp script that we'll call our volume controller. And we'll open this up in mono develop. And like I said, this is what we're going to use to actually set the audio level on each individual object and then our audio our, our sorry our volume manager will control the volumes for all of these objects and be able to set it so that when we set a new volume we can set it from our volume manager so on our volume controller we'll obviously need a reference to the audio itself so that'll be a we'll create a private audio source that we'll call the audio and this script will be attached to all the audio objects within our world. So at the start, we'll want it to find what the particular audio attached to this script is. So it'll be the audio is equal to get component audio source like that. And the next thing we need to do is uh, control what the audio level should be at any particular time. So we'll use a private, oops, private float for this that we'll just call our audio level. So this will be whatever the kind of active audio level should be, but we also want to have what our starting audio should be. So this will be whatever we want to set our, um, our volume to. So we'll have a public float, uh, we'll call it default audio. So I'll just say this for a second and we'll go back in here and just for example, of what I'm, when, I'm, when I say that after we're controlling the level, say that'll be if we want uh, our heart object, our heart sound effect here to be at, uh, say, 0.8 by default, we'll store, we'll store that as the default audio level. And what we're going to do then is multiply by whatever value we have for our current overall um, sound level, and that'll give us what our current audio level should be. And if you're a bit confused, we'll, we'll see that in action as we go further here. So the only other thing we need to add into this script is something to be able to set the level. So 
obviously in our update loop we don't really want to do anything there because we don't want to be constantly changing the audio level that would be a little bit annoying so what we'll do is create an extra function so we'll create a public void and we'll call it set audio level and we're going to need to pass in a value here that we're going to call float uh, just volume like that and the reason we want to pass that in is because say say we're using a range between 0 and 100 for our volume uh, in an options menu of some kind what it'll actually translate to is just a value between 0 and 1 that we're going to use on the scale because as you can see if we look back here our volume level is only between 0 and 1 so we don't want to go above that so what we'll have is we'll pass a number in here say that would be say we have our volume set to be halfway so that'll be 0.5 so we'll multiply that by whatever our current default audio level is so say if that is if that's just one then what we'll get is a new this is how we're going to set our audio level so we'll say here our audio level will be equal to our default audio multiplied by our volume so say as I said if our volume is 0.5 and our default audio is 1, that will give us a new audio level of 0.5. But by the same token, if we were using 0.8 as our default audio value, now when we multiply by the volume, we'll have it set down to 0.4. So what we're doing is creating it so that it can be dynamically pushed up and down. So now that we have our audio level uh, value here, we need to actually set the volume on the audio source. So we'll say the audio dot volume is equal to audio level so we're going to save that there and that's basically all we need to do in our volume controller obviously this won't actually do anything just yet but now that we've created that script we're going to attach it to our various sound effect objects here so just let it compile for a second and once that's finished we'll click just to expand the music manager here and i'm just going to select all of our sound effects objects and I'm going to drag our volume controller script onto there and we're just gonna by default we're just gonna leave them all having a default audio level of one for the time being because that's just straightforward enough for us so next thing we need to do is create our volume controller script so before I do that I'm just going to create a new object here that we're going to call our volume controller and now that we have a few various different bits of kind of audio stuff going on here I'm going to create a new object as well here to kind of hold all of these in so we're going to have just we we'll just create, call this audio and we're going to select our sound effects manager and music manager and our volume controller and drag that onto our audio so that all of these things are within here and then we can just collapse that and it's not taking up a whole lot of space within our hierarchy here uh, we leave our switch music out because that's not something that's actually uh, running any any sounds at any particular time that's just an interactive object within our game so now that we have this audio object I'm going to oh, sorry no now that we have our volume controller down here we're going to oh this should be volume manager actually would make a little bit more sense volume manager and we're going to create a volume manager script volume manager and we'll open this up in mono develop 2 and we'll actually just click and drag that onto our volume manager no it won't add for a second just because it's compiling for the first time just while it's doing that there no we'll try one more time there we go it worked that time just because it was still compiling okay so now we have a volume manager just attached there so we know it's already attached first so in our volume manager the first thing we need is we need to be able to tell uh, or we need need to know all of the uh, audio objects that are within our world so basically all our audio objects will have a volume controller script attached and as we know we're using that to manage the volumes of things what we're going to do is create a public array of volume controller objects so we'll create public volume controller array and we'll just call this VC objects like that and then in our start function what we'll do is just find all the objects that are currently within our scene so we'll say VC objects is equal to um, find objects of type 
volume controller like that so just to see this working we'll save that go back into our game here we'll just let it compile before we play it and what we should get when we play the game is all our little uh, audio effects here should be added into um, our game so we see we have our VC objects or not added in our game added into our array here so oh, I'll turn off that maximize now in a second but as you can see we've got our five objects here just the way we want them to be so they're now running in our game just the way it was just the way we want them so I'm just gonna turn off my maximize on play there for a second Um, so that works fine so now I can actually do some stuff within that so what we what we'll want to have really is we want to be able to control what the overall volume of all our objects should be so we're going to need a public float that we'll call our current volume level and we'll actually just add in one extra thing as well we'll add a public float uh, max volume level and this will just be kind of a little catch so that we don't do any kind of strange error at some point and set our volume to be way too high. So what we're going to do is just say that our current volume level can't be any higher than our max, max volume level. And then we'll actually set our max volume level by default to be equal to 1. Because we don't want our volume ever going above 1. So we'll say our max volume level is set to be one and because it's a public value we can actually change that if we want to but we shouldn't really uh, actually mess around with that too much but we'll leave it as it is so what we'll say is in our start function here we'll just say if our current volume level is greater than our max volume level then set it to be our current volume level is equal to our max volume level so if for some reason we end up with our current volume being above one let's say if it's a hundred or two or whatever we'll just set it back down to be one so it can't go above that but if we are changing our max volume level to be anything else we're actually wanting all our audio objects to be at a different volume so we're going to have to loop through our array of objects here and set them to be equal to the new kind of adjusted volume level so say if we have our current volume level at 0.8 we want to multiply all our other audio objects by 0.8 so that they get adjusted down to different values so what we can say here is just create a new for loop so we'll say for int i equals 0 so a new int value that is 0 as long as i is less than the length of our uh, our vc objects vc objects array so vc objects dot length as long as i is less than that then we will keep making i larger after each loop through of our little for loop here so what we all we need to say in here is look in our array at position i so as we've done before start off at i zero so to look at the first object and the second object and the third object etc however many objects you have and we want to go oh, no, we want to go into our volume controller script and call the function that we created which was set audio level and we want to set the value we want to pass into there is our current volume level so we'll save that and that's that's pretty much it for this script at this stage because all we wanted to do right now is to set our audio levels to be the correct level when we start our game in the future as I said when we will add like options menus or anything like that into the game then we'll want to be able to kind of we'll add an extra little function that will be called that will actually loop through the same array in the exact same way and adjust the volume kind of on the fly but for now we just wanted to change the volume when we start our game so we'll set our current volume volume level to be one like that and if we hit play for the moment that shouldn't make any changes to the audio level for us so if we hit play here oh we've got a bit of an error we've got an what's that error now on line 22 
actually not sure what's causing that error. But we'll just continue on for the moment. Um, it might become apparent as we go. So what what we, what is happening obviously is the sound effects are working just as we want. So let's try setting on our volume manager. We're going to set the current volume level to 0.8. And if we hit play, what we should get when we click on any of these sounds now. Oh no, we haven't got... So we've got a couple of them being set right, but then not being set right. Very strange. Okay, uh, so we've got this little error here. Uh, I was trying to work out what was going on. There's not actually a problem with the script, but what we're encountering is a problem with the order of execution of our scripts. So at the moment, what's happening is in our volume manager, it's going through our array of volume controller objects and it's trying to find uh, the or it's, it's calling this function on our particular object so say it's our volume controller I just had this little debug line just to check what was going on um, and it's so it's calling the function on the volume controller if we go to our volume controller it's going to here it's setting our audio level just fine and then it's going to our audio.volume and it's trying to set that but because our volume manager script is happening first in our kind of start loop our volume controllers aren't actually doing anything yet, so they haven't assigned what the audio should be. So what we could do is go and change our script kind of execution order. But another way to kind of fix this problem would be to do a little check here in our our set audio level function. So we'll say our, uh, if the audio um, is equal to null. So if our audio is currently empty. We're going to do our little finding the script uh, or finding the component for the audio source here and then applying it like that and that should get rid of our problem that we're having and uh, just going back to our volume manager script i'm going to get rid of this debug because we don't i don't actually need that that was just a check to see if it was looping through any of the array at all which it wasn't i was just i thought it was but it absolutely wasn't at all and um, so we'll go back in here now let it compile and this should fix the error that we were having. We'll hit play. And there we go. Okay, so we're not getting any errors. And we can see that our sword swoosh has been set to be 0.8, just like we wanted it to be. Our dead and our heart, they're all being set to 0.82, which is not what they should be doing. They should be being multiplied by what are their default value oh because they all have default audio, default audio of one sorry uh so by default they all have one applied but it's just that i had adjusted their volumes themselves here so what we actually need to do is remember not to just adjust the volume here but apply it to the default audio here so say say this guy our heart one we set him to be 0.8 and our dead we set him to be 0.52 just like we have kind of adjusted them there we can hit play and now these values should be adjusted down so see we have our default is 0.52 and our volume is down to 0.41 so we can see our volume manager is actually working if we're just having a little bit of an error thrown off by um, the kind of order of execution of our scripts but you can see our volume manager is now working so the only thing that we want to do in the future when we add an options kind of menu into our game will be to create a simple function that will be able to do that volume adjustment on the fly but you can see it's very straightforward to actually add that function in uh, because we're making it happen straight away when we start a game and this way we're able to control our game and actually make it a little bit less annoying when we're developing the game because when you're developing the game and you're testing things over and over you don't really want to hear uh, your music playing the whole time so we can just easily set this to be zero hit play and now we can just play to our game and not have to worry about uh, turning off individual music bits when we want to go through and play the game and it makes it a little bit more easier when you're testing things out within the game world so there you go that's how you can actually control the volume within your game and make it a little bit more manageable a for development and setting up so that we'll be able to be make the music more manageable for our players in the future. So thanks for watching this episode and I'll be back soon with more RPG tutorial goodness.